Have you ever wondered what it takes to build your very own web framework supporting all the latest technologies such as SSR, image optimization, incremental static regeneration, edge functions, and so on? In this video, we'll be doing just that. Using Vercel's Build Output API, we'll be building our own framework that can create statically optimized pages, use serverless functions for SSR, enable incremental static regeneration, use edge functions to render pages at the edge, enable image optimization to serve images with modern image formats, and use the Vercel Edge network to cache our static assets at the edge. For this demo, we'll be using our own framework to build an e-commerce website, where users can see a landing page with a larger image, browse the products, and see products that are popular in their area. Let's see what we can do to these pages to create a better experience. The landing page is a static page with a single large hero image. There are a few optimizations we can implement here. First, we can reduce the image size without sacrificing quality, but using the latest image formats like WebP or AVIF. We can also prevent layout shift by explicitly setting the image width and height. Since the page is static, we can also improve the user experience by using the Vercel Edge network. This can improve the time to first byte by caching the file at each region. Vercel provides this functionality out of the box with the Edge network for static files, so we actually don't need to add this ourselves. The products page is a hybrid between a pre-generated static HTML page and a dynamic server render page. The page renders a list of products, which should update after a certain amount of time. This rendering pattern is also referred to as incremental static regeneration and gives you the benefits of static generation combined with the dynamic benefits of server-side rendering. When using the Build Output API, we can use pre-render functions to enable and configure ISR on certain pages. We can also again optimize the images using image optimization. On the popular page, we want to display the most relevant, personalized products to our visitors. To get the visitor's location, we can use an edge function to determine the city based on the x Vercel IP city header. We can take two approaches here. We can either use edge middleware to redirect the user to a specific page based on their location, or we can server render the page using edge functions. In this case, we'll choose edge server rendering for a fast and personalized page. I won't cover the code for the pages themselves, but instead let's start focusing on implementing our own framework to ensure that it supports all the above mentioned features. Let's say that our framework expects the pages to be located in the pages folder and a page contains a default export with the page's components and a configuration object. This includes a strategy prop, which defines the rendering technique that should be used for this page, either static, SSR, edge, or pre-render. And if a page is pre-rendered, users can also pass the optional revalidate time, which specifies when the page should get regenerated. Let's see how our framework can work with these values and create a valid output that Vercel can use to deploy our project. First, let's add support for static pages. To statically render a page, we have to do two things. First, we have to transpile the React component to static HTML. And if the page has interactive components, we also need to create a JavaScript bundle to eventually bind event handlers to the static HTML. To render the page's React element, we can use the render to string method exposed by React DOM server. This method takes a React component and returns the corresponding HTML output. Next, to be able to make the static markup interactive, we need to create a JavaScript bundle that can hydrate the page. We need to use a bundler to create one or multiple JavaScript bundles that can hydrate the static markup once it's been rendered. In this case, we'll use ESBuild as our bundler, which takes the contents of a custom hydration script that executes the hydrate root method on our documents and dynamically creates an element from a page's component. The bundler can automatically output the contents of this JavaScript bundle in the static folder of the build output API. Lastly, we can write the HTML file to the static output folder, which contains the page's HTML code and a script to fetch the JavaScript bundle. After traversing the pages in the pages folder, we can check which pages have the static strategy. For these pages, we can invoke the create static file method, which then outputs the HTML and the JavaScript bundle in the Vercel static folder. To support ISR, there are a few things we have to do. First, we have to create a serverless function that takes care of regenerating the page. To configure the serverless function, we have to create a VC config file that Vercel uses to configure the function's environment. We also need to create a pre-render config, 
which Vercel uses to determine when and how to regenerate this page. And lastly, we need to create a static HTML page that gets shown while the page is being regenerated in the background. We can create a create pre-render function. We'll call it pre-render here because that's what the build output API currently uses to refer to functions that enable ISR. This function creates both a static page that serves as the fallback and a serverless function. First, let's focus on the serverless function, which should take care of generating the page's HTML. You can see that the code here is pretty similar to the create static file function. We're generating a client-side bundle again to hydrate the page, but this time we're also invoking the generate lambda bundle function. Within this function, we again use ES build to bundle our code together for the serverless function. This is necessary since the function runs in its own environment. So we have to make sure that its handler has access to all the necessary code to execute successfully. That means that we have to generate a Lambda bundle, which also includes the imported React and React DOM modules. We bundle the handler code, which renders the HTML similar to what we saw before, but this time it happens at request time instead of at build time. The function returns a generated HTML and contains a script to fetch the JavaScript bundle. The bundler automatically writes the output to the page's function folder, which the build output API expects to be the name of the page followed by the .func extension. Lastly, back in the create serverless function function, we create a VC config file to configure the serverless function with the correct runtime and handler. Back in the create pre-render function, we've now covered the create serverless function to create the lambda that server renders the page, and we've covered the create static file previously to statically generate the page. So lastly, we need to create a pre-render config by specifying the expiration which the user can configure in the page config object within the page and the path to the fallback HTML that we previously created. When traversing the pages, we can now invoke the create pre-render function for the pages with the pre-render strategy. And since we had to implement the SSR functionality for the pre-render pages, we can simply execute the create serverless function function for the pages with the SSR strategy. This means that for pages with the SSR strategy, we'll only create a serverless function without the support for automatic invalidation and regeneration. Next, let's focus on creating edge functions. Edge functions are pretty similar to serverless functions. However, instead of using the Node.js runtime, they use the edge runtime. This means that many Node APIs are not available within such functions. However, due to React's isomorphic nature, it is compatible with the edge runtime, and this allows us to render React at the edge. Creating an edge function is similar to what we did before when we created a serverless function, but it's runtime as the most significant difference. Within the create edge function, we create a bundle for the edge function. This bundles the edge function with the required dependencies. Generating the bundle is similar to the serverless approach. However, this time we care about the values that are present on the request object. We again return the generated HTML as the response from the function. Back in the create edge function, we need to configure the function in the VC config file by setting its runtime to edge and specifying the entry point. Now for the pages with the edge strategy, we can invoke the create edge function function. Now that we've covered the page generation, let's see how we can optimize images. There are two things we have to do here. First, we have to point the image source to the Vercel image path. And if we're using external images, we have to add the domains to the images array in the Vercel config file. We can make it easy to use optimized images by exporting an image component, which ensures that the SRC points to the Vercel image path, and also adds the necessary height and width to serve the correct image size based on the viewport. In a Vercel config.js file, we can define the image configuration, such as the domain if it's an external domain, the image size, and the modern image format that we want to use. Now let's finish the entire build Vercel output function. First, we have to make sure that the current Vercel output directory is empty and also ensure that a new static folder is initialized. Then if we provided a public folder, we should copy the contents to the static folder in the build output folder. This can consist of images, CSS, and so on. Then we have to traverse the pages to execute the right function for each strategy. And lastly, we have to configure the config JSON based on the project for cell config JS if it exists and configure the routes for the pages properly. After building this project, we end up with a valid Vercel output folder that contains a functions folder with the pre-render, serverless, and edge functions, and a static folder that contains the static pages and content copied from the public folder. Now, when we deploy this to Vercel with the pre-builds flag, Vercel will use this output folder and deploy the website built with our very own framework. 
When using modern frameworks such as Next.js, we luckily don't have to worry about implementing all these steps since the optimizations are provided out of the box. However, if you're an independent developer that wants to benefit from the platform's features, or a framework author that's looking to integrate with Vercel, the Build Output API makes it easy to build any project on Vercel. Although it should be clear that this framework should not be used in production, it's good to see how modern frameworks make development so much easier. The source code for this demo is available on GitHub, and if you'd like to learn more about the Build Output API, make sure to check out the documentation.